Okay guys, so in this video I'm just going to run through what I see as a teacher a lot of the time when I'm marking a graph. And this is basically how not to draw a graph. Now the first thing I'm going to go to is the title here. Now this person, i.e. me, has only written temperature graph. That for me doesn't tell me what the experiment was about and it doesn't tell me what the graph is showing. So when you write a title, you want to mention your variables in there, okay? So it would be something like the change in temperature over time. Or well, I always like to start my graphs with a graph to show, and then that gives you the base. What does it show? Temperature changing over time. And you've got your two variables in there. So that's the first error that I see there. It's not an error, but it's something that I like. Second one, okay, is... Look at this, it's drawn in pen. So please don't draw in pen. I've drawn it all in pen. Terrible me. Please make sure that you do your graph in pencil. Second one, second error that I don't like. Look at this line, awful. Look at this line here, awful. And I've moved the paper, so I'm just going to make sure that I don't move it anymore. Look at this line here. It's terrible. Okay, so make sure that you use a ruler and that lines are crisp. Yep. Third one, I'm going to bring your attention down to here, and I'm talking about scale. From 0 to 40, we have two squares, which means each square is worth 20. Then suddenly we've got two, four, five squares equaling 10. So we've gone from a square being worth 20 to a square being worth two. So always make sure that your scale is correct. If you do need to miss out numbers down here, you can always do the old line like that, but I tend not to. Um, next one is, are the axes labelled? Look here, we've got time, that's fine. But what are the units of time? Second, always, by the way, make sure that your independent variable is along the bottom. Whatever's in the left of your results table should be along the bottom. There are some circumstances where you might want to change that. So, is the Y axis labelled? No, it's not. It's temperature and it's in degrees Celsius. So please make sure both of your axes are labelled. Now I'm going to check the plots. Now I'm just going to draw your attention to that. I'm using dots in this or the person has used dots. I prefer crosses. You can see it more clearly. If you're doing if you're marking two lines, two separate results, then you can use dots and crosses. But in the first instance, I would always use a cross. Check the plots. Zero is 63, zero is 60, two, three, good. 30, 30, 53, 52, three, 60, 48, 60, four, oh, that's wrong. So make sure that your plots are in the correct place, please. Next one, is your line. How are you going to draw these plots? Now, this the graph has draw, joined the lines of a ruler and I don't, what is going on here? That is an absolute mess. Make sure it's one continuous line. What's going on here? Suddenly we've got plots being joined and then suddenly that's not been joined. So make sure that you're being consistent. Now in this graph, to me, it actually looks like it's a line of best fit, like so, a curved line of best fit. So if you're brave, 
you could try to put in a line of best fit. If not, just join with a ruler. There is an anomaly, if I bring you over to here, it's going down, 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 48, 46, 48. So at 120, we do have this result that does not quite work. So you can avoid the anomaly. We tend to call them outliers these days. So there's some common mistakes on how not to draw a graph. Please take that into account and I hope this video helps. Bye bye.